I'm hearing a lot in the DNI space, diversity and inclusion, and uh, th there's clearly like a huge demand on this on the from our clients um, for diversity and inclusion solutions. I'm curious, what's your perspective on the current state of of that market, and um, and where do you see the DNI space evolving towards? Yeah, I think we're we're in its infancy, the field is in its infancy. And I think that the intentions are good because there is clearly, at least in the liberal, western, uh, free, industrialized, rich world, an intention to leverage uh, diversity uh, or the unique kind of uh, features, qualities, background styles that humans from different places bring to the table when they work together. And that's much harder to do than having people who are all the same. Yeah. So I think the intention is good, but unfortunately, the field has become very politicized and is too detached from what science tells us. Ultimately, we will make progress when we deploy the right tools, expertise, and even clinical um, judgment to leverage what each individual brings to the table. And we can go beyond these typical demographic categories like gender, age, race, which are important and everyone wants a fairer and more just world, mm -hmm. to really unlock what each individual can bring to the table. So I think cognitive diversity yeah. should be the ultimate goal. And to understand that, you really need to have good assessment, you need to have good coaching, mm -hmm. and you need to have good expertise. Um, and actually technology will help because technology can be blind to these categories that we're all um, overly exposed to. Like we cannot look at a candidate and forget their ethnicity, their gender, their age. Mm -hmm. Technology can help us be more um, gender blind or race Actually blind. remove our biases. Correct. And, because and, and uh, evaluate based on cognitive diversity and dimensions. Correct. Yeah. Because there might be uh, an old white woman who from a personality, competencies or aptitude perspective is very, very similar to a young black male. Mm -hmm. And when we look at them, we said, okay, they're very different because, and vice versa, right? Correct. You can have two people that are the same ethnicity, age and gender, but actually they're so different. So I think the challenge for organizations is to leverage mm -hmm the unique attributes that people bring to the table. And let's not forget that 99.9% .9 of our DNA is the same for all of us. So that 0.01%, you have to double click on that and there you get to differences in values, competencies, traits, abilities. So it's, it's molecular almost, but that's what can make or break a, a high performing team. Yeah, I think that's so often missed um, for reasons you shared. Where we're starting at right now is diversity along the lines of demographic, race, gender. Um, but one of the real key business drivers for diversity really is that cognitive diversity and what it means to have a team of people who are thinking differently but in harmony with each other towards right. a business problem or challenge.